Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and this is just going to be a toolbox overview, um, kind of like a toolbox tour. Uh, so, this is going to be every tool I have, uh, what I have that I find useful. Give me a good bit of information in this video, so stay tuned. Alright, so this little toolbox we'll get to, but we're going to start with this one, and that one over there we'll get to after. Uh, and this one's actually not my toolbox, so that's pretty much nothing that we're getting into today. So first, things first, is I keep my Milwaukee battery charger right here front and center. You don't have to do this. I'm actually not a big fan of this because charging my batteries right here, uh, there's a lot of better places I could go. I ended up stuffing it through that hole, which took some doing. <laughs> and I'm not sure I can get it back out, but uh, yeah. This, I mean, it takes, up a, it takes up some room up here. So if you have somewhere else to put it, like you can hang it on a wall or whatever, that's great. The, the great thing is though, is if you, you can actually close it right now, but if you take the batteries out of it, you can. And uh, I don't ever actually close this thing, but if you wanted to, this tray would have to move over here and kind of just sit like that so that it could close. Um, but I think everything else would be pretty much okay. Um, anyway. So, on the lid of the toolbox, I have a magnetic tray here, a little one here. I actually have another one. It's not here right now. It's in my camper top, just kind of holding screws. I need to bring it back over here. But, you're probably wondering why there's one wrench and two pairs of decks. So, this one wrench is for battery terminals. Uh, it's a half-inch ratchet wrench. So, it's a gear wrench brand. So, it's really good for battery terminals. Uh, two pairs of dikes. I normally have more than one person, more than just me working. So, two pairs, just in case I'm already out using one and somebody needs one. You know, there's that second one for somebody to use. Here on the top, Milwaukee battery charger with batteries. Um, I have a nut driver, three ratchets. So, this one, this was just a Pittsburgh quarter inch ratchet. Great tooth count. I actually love this ratchet a lot because of the handle on it. Uh, right here, I have a Craftsman skinny head. So, this is really good for getting into tighter places. Uh, this actually ended up being a free ratchet because I had broke one of my very old ones and they didn't sell that model anymore so I got that one and then there's this one this is my highest tooth count ratchet that I own actually and this one's like a hundred and sixty tooth craftsman quarter inch and this thing is so nice I mean it's just it's a very nice ratchet to have uh, another driver obviously Quarter inch socket rails, so here this is the metric and this is the standard socket rail. Uh, if you notice I'll have some deeps, I, didn't, I don't really have a lot of metric deeps. So the thing about my tools is I don't really have sets. Um, I've bought toolboxes like I bought that red one right there and I bought that one over there. And I've kind of taken sockets out of those and stuff that I already had and I've made complete sets. So yeah, if you're wondering why why it is kind of weird in here that's why that's why I don't have like every single socket over here I have all my quarter inch extensions uh, it's nice having them here because if I'm to roll it the worst thing they can do is move and smack against this over here I have a 3 8 task force ratchet uh, this actually came with whenever I bought that toolbox over there um, so as far as how much money I have in boxes I just want to talk about that real quick this box this US General sent me back $200 that one I paid $200 for. It was It's used, uh, but it came slap full of tools. And I paid $40 for this box. So, And then that one down there, my parents actually got me. So, yeah, I've got about $500 worth of just toolboxes here. Um, anyway, so I keep screwdrivers right here with them. Uh, this is a small flathead for getting into tight spaces. A large Phillips. And then we have a standard. Well, I call these standard. These pretty much go for everything. My dog's over there hacking up a lung. Anywho. Right here, Pittsburgh uh, 3 h ratchet. This is a great ratchet to have. Uh, it's a really good length, so you can really get on a bolt and break it loose. Uh, that's really nice to have. I love having that ratchet. Razor knife, a center punch for drilling out holes. Uh, small screwdriver, there's some kind of miscellaneous light bulbs and stuff that I need to clean out. Uh, but I also have a air gun, this USB that need to be in here. A Sharpie, that's good for marking stuff. A mirror, an extra razor blade. A magnet. This is a stick magnet, uh, a flashlight magnet, which actually doesn't work. And then there's this flashlight, uh, which I have more flashlights, but they're not in here. 
So, that's that. This is on my 3.8 socket, so this is actually, this actually came as a set, and I just kind of cut the end off of it so that it didn't stick out so far. And I'm just kind of laid in here so that they can be nice and organized. I love, I really like having these rails. Uh, I have three 3.8 socket rails, so this is all my deep sockets. Uh, I'm pretty sure all those are metric. Um, I don't really remember to be honest with you. This is a this is a full standard shallow set. This is a full metric set. This one's actually missing, but it's not missing. I skipped one there specifically because I wanted to put an extra 10 millimeter. Uh, I just have not got around to getting it. Uh, no, I lied to you. These are my standard deeps. I have a full set of those, but as far as my metric deeps go, I didn't have that many. So this is the adapters. There's a magnetic adapter. Uh, these are actually inverted Torx. But there's Torx, there's actually a Philip here. And then there's, this is the only one of these I even have. So I just went ahead and put it on here. Um, and then that just kind of sits back on that. I have a couple extensions here at the end. Uh, just kind of sit there. So that's all the sockets. I have a set of picks here. I'm not sure if y'all noticed that. There are a set of picks there. That's something that you have to have. Um, stubby screwdrivers are back here, kind of hiding. Um, this is a nut driver 3 8 nut driver uh all my pry bars i have a little I just, uh, there's one missing it's actually in my room for some reason uh pry bars all different sizes for whatever they need, i may need to use them for uh 3 8 stubby has a clip might as well use it uh here's a brushless regular drill and there here is a regular impact drill uh, both 18 volt um i initially if you're going to buy a drill, if you're going to buy a Milwaukee drill, you're very into Milwaukee, buy the 18 volt brushless. Because uh, if you're going to be drilling out holes and blocks, I have a 12 volt one here in the bottom drill we'll showcase in a minute. But um, the 18 volt does just a much better job. So that's the top drawer. I have a pair of safety glasses, obviously. So, yeah, that's the top of my toolbox. First drawer. These drawers are a little messy. So, you know. Anywho, first drawer. I know. It's crazy. So I need to organize these and put these somewhere else. For now, I'll just take them out. Um, but this is more of a junk drawer. Not really. Uh, I keep my long picks in here. I have a couple long picks. Uh, small flathead screwdriver thread locker. Uh, a couple RTVs. I got some blue and some, some red. And then I have some brake caliper lube. And then a bunch of random bolts. And then these are just... 3 8 sockets that I have, and this is actually one that holds. It just needs to be up here. Why is this not up here? Dude, it needs to be up here. Okay. So, yeah, this is just a bunch of random extras. Because, like I said, whenever I buy them, I get. I mean, I've, this is not even the beginning of the quarter inch sockets that I own. So, and then I've got some deep ones here that I probably don't keep up there. 11 30 second and a. 5 sixteenths deep, but I think this one's, no, it's not correct. I thought this one was broke. I may already have a 5 sixteenths deep up there. I'll have to look, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't really use a 5 sixteenths deep all that much. 10 millimeter deep is something that I'd love to have. I don't. There's another 5 sixteenths deep. So, that's that drawer. Now, this is another 3 8 drawer. So, bear with me for a minute while I kind of go over what's in here. So, this used to be my only drawer for 3 8 and then I ended up getting into these and I love these. If you're gonna if you're gonna buy sets, keep them with their package and just put them in here like this. They're much easier to manage uh, because you have to look. Oh, this is a 16 millimeter. Okay, not what I'm looking for. And then you gotta keep looking and looking and looking. So if you're gonna do that, do those. These are extras, uh, just in case one breaks. I actually have a couple impact sockets in here. Um, 5 8 impact and a 9 16 impact. So, if I need a 3 8 impact socket, I have them right here. Uh, and I actually need to set these kind of front and center. And these, uh, we'll talk about in a minute. So, don't worry about those right now. This is an extra spark plug socket and an extra torx. A couple deeps, all standard. None of them are metric. Um, a, a set of torx, a set of impact torx. So this is a big set, uh, seat belts and stuff like that, take Torx, I don't want to afford they do anyway. Uh, now I have this uh, kind of broke neck ratchet, 
so you can get in there and kind of get the stuff. It has a very low tooth count, which I'm not a big fan of, but uh, my friend gave me this ratchet for like five bucks, so I have like nothing in it. This, um, I got this tool. I, left, I think I paid seven dollars for this ratchet. Okay, I got it at a pawn shop, and I got like all this stuff that goes with it. So I got this little head, which pops out, and uh, I got these two. So we've got a 14 and a 19, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Dang, it won't focus, but that's a 14, and then this one is a 19. So, um. And I was actually at the same pawn shop, and I found this. This is actually a cobalt, but it chucks up the same. So, these, the great thing about these, if I can do this with one hand, let's see. You can put them on either side. I guess that's kind of a cool feature. I don't know if you'll ever use that. But, um, but what makes these pretty useful is that they're through sockets. So, you can get all the way over a stud and you know, ratchet on that. Um, just kind of remember, if you're going to have it this way, this is the way that a normal ratchet would face, but if you put it another way, your toggle will be weird. Um, so yeah, these are kind of useful. I've only ever used them like one time, um, but I don't do probably as much work as a regular mechanic would, so, you know, there's that, and I'll fix that all later. Uh, some extensions, some swivels, just some create stuff. Uh, this is the half inch door. So this has pretty much all my half inch stuff in it. So I'll keep my half inch ratchet in here. Um, I actually have another half inch ratchet, but it's not important. Extensions, swivels, adapters. This actually goes to three quarter. Kind of, it came in a set. So when this is a three quarter to half inch, but these do kind of make good extensions. Um, so like, if I need a very short extension and I'm not worried about round clearance, these can combine them to make an extension. So I've actually done that before. Uh, an oxygen sensor socket. Whenever I did the exhaust on the red truck, I had to buy this. So, um, an entire assortment of three eight, of half inch impact deep. I actually have a gaskets in here. It's going to seem weird. Uh, this place is kind of a mess right now. We're organizing and getting everything moved to where we can work in here. And so in that process, I'm just having to kind of shove stuff wherever. So that's why we had bulbs and a drawer. <laughs> but these are gaskets. Uh, this gasket is actually a used one, but it didn't tear. So if I got into an emergency and I needed to use it, I could. That's kind of where I'm at with that, those type of things. A lot of people say I'm just a hoarder, but I've been in that situation where it's like part stores closed. It's Sunday and I gotta drive this thing tomorrow. So keeping extra stuff. This is for my daily driver. I just realized the socket's cracked. <laughs> what brand is this? Oh, well, I can't replace that one. So oh well, it'll just stay in here as the cracked socket. Anyway. So, yeah, extensions, a full set of Pittsburgh deep. Now, I do have a couple Craftsmen. Uh, this is the size that fits a 1990s model Ford like that one. 13 16 deep. So, having that in a Craftsman, I bought that a while back. I also have a three-quarter. It fits most uh, newer Fords. Uh, it fits my mom's car. It fits my Ranger. My S10. It fits all that stuff. So, um, And then these are just sockets. I mean... There's no need for me to go over every single socket in that drawer. They're half inch deep. I don't have any. I don't have that many half inch shallow. The ones I do are at the back there, um, and they're mostly twelve point. So there's a couple six point though. I just noticed this. It's a three eight. And a nineteen thirty second. What the hell is a nineteen thirty second? I don't know what the nineteen thirty second even is. So, but I have it. I never need it. Anywho, down here is my rich drawer. Now, I know that this looks quite unorganized. It's kind of is, but it also kind of isn't. So, I really like try to do my best, but these things do slide around. So, I've just kind of done what I can to, and whenever I get in here, I just kind of do this. And then there, I'm organized. Uh, these are my gigantic wrenches. So, you know, if I need something ridiculous, I have a gigantic nut on it, I have a, uh, Metric or standard, I mean, flare nut, Pittsburgh, a craftsman set of of metric line wrenches, and then we have a full set of metric of standard wrenches, and a kind of set of 
metric wrenches. But we'll get back to wrenches later because I have more than one wrench box. So, and then I have this broken 15 millimeter snap-on. Uh, thing about snap-on tools, and a lot of guys love snap-on, and there's nothing wrong with it. I use whenever I go to class up there, I use snap-on all the time. But this one actually broke, and I ground it flat so that if I wanted to get on there with something, it wouldn't cut it in my hand. So uh, I don't have a way of replacing a snap-on wrench. I don't have a guy that comes to me. Uh, I'm not sure if you can send them online or whatever. So yeah, I just kind of have this. This is like a half wrench. I use it. I've actually never used it. So I just ground this flat right before this video. So. But yeah, I just kind of found this, and I was like, well, I might have a use for that. I don't know. I may end up throwing it away. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Now, this. This is a lifesaver. This is a six-point wrench. Um, if you're going to be taking this carburetor, this is actually 3 8 so this isn't the standard size for carburetors. But if you're going to be doing a lot of carburetor jobs, you want to get you a six-point wrench. Because a lot of them you got to get in there with a wrench, and a 12-point will actually round that bolt. And then you're in for a lot of fun. Um, so down here, this is pretty much my junk drawer. Um, but at the same time, again, not really. I kind of I know what's in here. I've got all my. I, this is pretty much where I keep everything right now. Is there some screwdriver down here? What the? There. So uh, I have a soldering iron, heat shrink tubing, uh, solder wire wheels for a drill there's a couple batteries in here there's a 5 amp hour 18 volt battery in here and then there is a 12 volt 3 amp hour battery here now in here I keep my 12 volt impact and my uh, uh, 12 volt drill now if you're wondering why I have a 12 volt drill and and that one mainly because well right now I don't have another place for this plus uh, sometimes I got two guys working for me so like um, we have a big project coming up for the 81 where we're going to have all this cleaned out hopefully and have the frame in here. We're going to be sanding it and wire brushing it. I have two drills. So one of us can be running that one and one of us can be running that one. And, you know, we're good. This is my big half inch high torque fuel impact. This is, I use that for breaking lug nuts loose more than anything else. I have a 3 8 uh, Craftsman torque wrench. I have a half inch Pittsburgh uh, breaker bar and actually a half inch snap on breaker bar so yeah this is a very old snap on breaker bar but it is snap on so uh, yeah I have a lot of old old or old snap on tool so I also have some wire strips here don't need to be in here I'm taking those out right now these are the ones I use at work I don't need to be in here. But if you're looking for a good pair of wire strippers, Milwaukee is the way to go. I mean, these are the best wire strippers I've ever owned. They also double as needle nose pliers. So that makes them very versatile. This is a very versatile tool. I mean, if I need something and I'm going in the ceiling, these are in my pocket. Which is why I've been very upset they've been in this toolbox. Gasket scrapers, uh, door jam pullers. There's some sawzall blades in here because. Where is my sawzall? Oh, I forgot to talk about my sawzall. Uh, my saws all hangs on the side here, so if I need to cut open anything, I have that. Over here on the side, we have all my cleaners, brake clean, WD-40, uh, throttle body cleaner, three cans of WD-40, actually, and just some basic lubricant. So, yeah, that's all the drawers in this whole box. Down here on the bottom, this is a full set of Husky ratchet wrenches, uh, my red shop towels I keep, some random miscellaneous junk, a Dremel box, but there's not a Dremel in there. Uh, this is the box my torque wrench came in. I don't know why I have all this. Uh, this is actually a heat gun for you know the heat shrink tubing that I do. So yeah, that is this toolbox. Pretty much, this is actually a ball joint puller or ball puller and press. So that is all that. So that is this toolbox pretty much completed. Uh, these, like I said, this box is kind of a mess right now, and I. Not very happy about it, but there's not. There's also not really a whole lot I can do about it. Not until I get this thing cleaned up. So now we will move on. There's my skill saw. Now we will move on to here. So this, before I say anything, this is my travel box. So I need. I'm getting a toolbox for my truck today. Actually, my friend's gonna um, give me one for a good price. So um, this is my travel box. So it's always a mess. You can organize this as many times as you want always a freaking mess so 
in here I have my Ford fuel line tools um, and these and these work for rails and all that so I know I don't have a set in there but this box if I'm working at home will generally be at home so if I need them anything in here I can normally access when I'm working here so just kind of keep that in mind I keep a meter in here for testing electrical stuff I've never actually used this but this is supposed to be a voltage battery alternator checker I don't know how well it works so don't hold me on that one uh, there's a spare fuel tank selector switch for 90s model Fords I do a lot of those um, that's mainly what I that's I own one and I have one there's some nuts in here spare bolts there's all just all kinds of crap on the top of this thing there's an awl which needs to be sharpened because it's dull it's an awl it's good for scribing it doesn't really need to be in there but the top here this 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 uh, toolbox has a complete set of wrenches complete there's not one missing except for an 18 millimeter that is the only wrench that I'm missing all right, and these Craftsman line wrenches are actually my dad's, but he put them in here, and I don't think we put them back in his box yet. So, um, complete set. This is a complete set of standard wrenches up here. I don't want to pull all of them out because I just don't want to do that. Down here is a practically complete set of um, what was I just saying? Oh, a practically complete set of metric wrenches. Uh, except for 18 millimeter. That's the only one I'm missing. And I actually have an 18mm ratchet wrench in there. So if I need that, I've got a place to go find one. Um, so, yeah. So like I said, guys, this is my travel box. Uh, these are supposed to be like a very early ratcheting wrench type. They kind of work. 12mm, uh, this is good for drive shaft. I'll have the length of it, too. Um, I have a lot of... I have a lot of duplicates in here because uh, if I'm going somewhere, I've normally got people with me. I was trying to see if I could find. Oh, it's not going to be. Um, can I find it? Can I find it? Can I find it? Ha! Half inch, six point. This is good for carburetors. If you're removing carburetors, buy one of these wrenches. It's a half inch. Uh, this is actually a gear wrench, so it is, I can get it warranted if I need to. Uh, that, yeah. And I also have a 916 ratchet wrench, half inch ratchet wrench in there. Um, so I have pretty much every tool that I would ever need out in the field. Now, I know that you're thinking, well, you're out there working. Well, what, do you, what do you take with you for sockets? That. So this is what I worked out of whenever I first started um, doing my own stuff at home. This is a complete toolkit. It's got every size of 3 gates that in there that you could ever need. There's a couple half inch in there. But something that I do anyway, it doesn't have any 3 gates deep. So I always try to bring some extra stuff with me. So I always bring a couple extra ratchets. And I can grab these. These are portable. That's the great thing about these is all this is portable. So um, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of junkyards. Because I'll pull stuff at junkyards that I need. I've got a cab sitting over there. I mean that's something that we had to go and get um, the guy actually pulled the force that's my point though if I'm going to junk I need to pull that I'm gonna need those tools um, this toolbox I'm only gonna really talk about a little bit the top is just a mess of random tools that came with this so uh, first thing we got here is Allen wrenches and torques um, so if I need Allen stuff come to this toolbox there's some little nippy pliers in here a couple little pliers uh, this is just kind of a random door this toolbox like I said is not well organized there's a bolt extractor in here uh, whatever this is and believe it or not I cleaned out this toolbox and this is there's some couple taps in here which are great to have um, if I were to need those come to the toolbox so here's all my screwdrivers uh, just some there's all kinds of just drivers in here. Gigantor. All that. T handles. Uh, okay, guys. <laughs> it's early. But I figured I'd go and finish this video today. So, who put that there? Oh my god. Anyway. I've tried to get this place organized, it's not working, but I recently invested in a welder, um, 
I paid a hundred bucks for that. We're gonna restore it. It's missing a ground clamp and uh it's a little rusted. I mean it's not it's not honestly that bad of oil there. I don't even know if we're working it. So you know, there's all that. Also I don't know who's been in here. Oh my god, why is <sighs> Okay, I'm gonna go clean and then I'll get back to you because somebody has made my entire video stressful for today. So it's not perfect yet. It's getting there. Somebody left the drink out here. Um, so this is going to be my work table. It's kind of a mess right now. i got a coil sitting here I was testing and all kinds of other crap. But anyway, so this is like a shop update and the toolbox tour. Um, so yeah, so this is where I'm currently keeping all my cleaners and paint. I've got some uh, some cleaner back there. WD-40 liquid rinse to break clean. Uh, some oven cleaner for cleaning aluminum, shop towels, some disc brake quiet, which I don't use. Uh, cleaners for cleaning cars. Uh, I've got some microfibers. These are actually brake shoes for my grandma's car, which she hasn't brought back here for me to put on yet. Up here I've got gloves and zip ties and grease and brake fluid. Pretty much everything that anybody ever needs. So this is going to be my shop cabinet uh, where I keep all my stuff. I've also got another one over here. But that toolbox needs to be moved and cleaned and all that such. So this is a big, this is going to take up a big chunk of my time. Um, but I'm hoping to have all of this moved somewhere else so that I can put the 81 here. So that we can get started on grinding a frame and getting a frame ready. But I need to get enough cleaned out to where I can measure this. And to me it looks like it'll be enough. Uh, but my dad's kind of uncertain. So we're going to make sure that it will be long enough. For us to get the, oh my god, dude, oh, I'm so tired. Anyway, for us to get the truck in here. And the motor is going to rest right here. I have, I cleaned this area out and in my engine stand. And then a shop can land it on it. Ow. Oh. Anyway. So yeah, this was supposed to be an easy video. And then somebody came out here and made a bigger mess of this than it really was. Um, but we're going to fix this shop air compressor. We got it a couple years ago. And, uh... Nobody ever got around to doing anything with it, so we're going to have a couple restoration projects. We're going to have that. We're going to restore the welder, and uh, we got a generator here that I want to actually store out back, but I want to get it fixed and all that and make sure that it works. So I'll probably rebuild the carburetor and all that on it and get it going. Um, so, yeah, let's just... Uh, Perfect. So, this is not anything spectacular. This is a mess. I know. And I got a freaking bench we're going to lay over here. That, by the way, how it works, you just, if you want to use it, you plug in the cable and it turns on. You don't have a, it doesn't have a switch. It's fine. It does work pretty good, though. I've been grinding stuff with that for a while. I just, this is my switch, plugging and unplugging it, so actually put any wind on that. Anyway, I need to stop talking. Uh, and to finish off this tool box tour, so I really am not going to go through this box. Uh, there's hammers in there, pliers. I've got all my vice grips and pliers in, in one of these drawers. In this drawer. That's all my vice grips and pliers, but you can't see because the garage door isn't open. And it's raining outside. Somebody just drove by. I don't really want to open this. Okay. Okay. But, so in this drawer uh, is the T handles. Um, I don't use these, but I do use this. <laughs> this is a very long Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, and what this is good for is testing injectors. So if I need to get to one, and I can kind of use it as like a stethoscope and put my ear to it and listen. I also have a flathead in there. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's really ever going to be of that much use. And just a whole bunch of stuff came with this box. And I didn't really throw any of it away. Because, I mean, they're all good tools. Um, but this is all my vice grips, pliers. Just a bunch of random stuff. This toolbox is not as organized as that other one. I've, I've said that. This is not a clean toolbox. At all. This is not my daily toolbox, this is just one that I kind of keep my, my, my gunk in. 
stuff that doesn't really fit in there. Uh, I got hammers in the bottom drawer and a stapler and sockets and files. I see just another random drawer. Extra, extra extensione magnets and all your drivers, nut drivers, whatnot. That one is wrenches actually, but I don't have that many in there. I mostly keep them over there. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This place is a mess, and I apologize for it. I apologize that I'm even showing you this stuff, but I wanted you guys to kind of get an idea of how I'm having to do things in here. I can't use the shop right now. This shop is basically useless to me. Uh, whenever I need to grind on something, I come over here to my grinder. Whenever I need to, you know, there's my vice, which has, there's my creeper. There's some of my Milwaukee stuff, and my, it's a mess. It's a horrendous mess, and I want it, I want it fixed. I don't want it all to be right. And apparently my dad tried to drive in a bearing. Because this is, this is all lawnmower stuff. We do a lot of, we do a little bit of everything. So we got everything around here. Uh, those are the subs that came out of the white truck I had to store in here. There's the transmission for the 81 that I rebuilt. Um, the engine will be over there. That's what I'm saying. This, this all, these all need homes, and uh, we're working on getting there. But it's a slow process. So, yeah, this is the shop update. Uh, I hope this video will be sufficient enough, because I have been tired and sick and not feeling well. So I haven't really felt like coming out here and working, making a video. I don't even really feel like editing. And I have another video that I could have edited, but it's like six or seven hours with the content and I do not feel like editing that especially whenever I'm sick so yeah this is it this is what's going on these shelves are probably not gonna be mine I'm gonna leave these because thing is I, as there's a whole family that lives here and the whole family uses this the whole family uses every room so I can't just go forget y'all and make this my shop and uh, that's something that we have to keep in mind too you know these shelves are gonna be all my mom's books and whatever she needs that's going to be our canned goods and stuff that we store out here. You know, camping gear is currently down there. I'm hoping to put that down there in that shop. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's going to be a lot of moving and, and organizing and getting everybody happy to where nobody's mad. You know, I don't want my mom hating me because I threw all of her stuff out. You know, this is, I know this isn't exactly ideal. Um, it'd be, it would be much more ideal if we could just take all this junk and just whew, you know, throw in a dumpster, but we can't do that, um, because I love my mom, and she's allowing me to live here, even at the age that I'm at, so I want to be as nice to her as she is being to me, so, we're going to treat it all with respect, we're going to do what we can, we're going to get everything organized, because, guys, in life, it's not about you, you know, it's about everybody, so if I just go, okay, freak you, I want to build my truck, you know, that's not... That's not very fair to my mom who's letting me live here. You know, she doesn't have to let me live here. I mean, she could easily kick me out on the side of the street. Doing that 81 build is hard enough <laughs> with the engine that I've almost, that I finally almost got done. Um, and then they, and then we went out and they were so nice whenever I wrecked my truck and they got me that one. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful. Oh, and I put a toolbox on it. It's very tiny though. I miss my weather guard a lot. Uh, I am going to end up getting my weather guard fixed. I just have not got around to grabbing it today. Uh, and I did tell myself that I was going to get up and drive to my grandma's house and get it. And then I got up and I laid in my bed until 10 o'clock. And now I'm out here recording this video. So I'm going to stop rambling. But I want you guys to just understand this is not just my garage. You know, this. I know what garages were made for. They were made for guys to come out here, work on what they need to work on for the house, uh, and all that such. It's just, it's just not how it is here. Here, everybody uses everything. You know, we, we, we share a kitchen. You know, I have food in there just as my mom does. My mom has stuff in here just as I do. So, uh, but my organizers, um, I thought about this a little bit, and I originally wanted to hang that one on the wall alongside that one which just ignore my target but alongside that one but 
I decided that I wanted to keep this one as my workbench uh, thing because I wanted to set. I want to keep this workbench. I love it. I love the height of it. It comes right up to my waist. It's perfect. It's perfect. I can, if I need to, I can set a chair here. Whenever I was doing those heads and getting everything out of those old heads, you know, I probably spent a lot of time at this table, and uh, I probably spent four or five hours at the table, which I know doesn't seem like a lot, but um, I mean, I really learned a lot doing it. I learned that if I set a chair here, I can easily and comfortably, you know, do what I need to do. This is easily going to make a great welding table. So uh, once I get my welder fixed, I'll be wanting to get into welding. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I do have two welders that we have to store in here, but I've been very much considered this is a stick welder. It's a gigantic stick welder, though. I mean, that thing is huge, but it's very old, but it works. It does work pretty good. We have welded with it. Uh, we actually welded up a little trailer over there with it not too long ago. Um, but this MIG is just a lot more versatile. It's a lot smaller, uh, and hopefully we get it up and running. It works good, and it is Lincoln Electric, and that's a name brand. I've heard they're good. Uh, I have heard Miller's better. I don't know if there's any truth to that. But I wanted a welder that I could do exhaust with and all that. Because doing the exhaust on the red truck and the white truck has been kind of stressful. Because I would have had to pay somebody to do it. Or do what I did on the on the, on the the red truck. Which ended up setting me back about 250 bucks, Which really wasn't all that bad. Not for a nice sounding good exhaust. But yeah. So I'm going to get that thing up and running. So that we can... This card actually does not go in here at all. Uh, we have a big trailer that we haul around to job sites. Where we're doing electrical. This actually goes in there. This is my shop vac that I'm going to keep in here. Uh, this is an indoor shop vac. I don't want it to stay outside and get rained on and all that such. This is a good shop vac. So I want to keep that in here for cleaning up the shop. And then I want to get this big air compressor going. So that we have sufficient air for whenever we're painting or whatever. Because I plan on doing a lot in this shop and uh, so I'm hoping to be able to stuff it in that corner but my dad says I'm not going to be able to I'm going to see what I can do uh, if I can't stuff it in that corner it's pretty much fine where it is because this thing is actually big enough for two cars as far as the width goes so I mean these sides being taken up space is fine it's the depth this shop is not very deep I mean there's the door and there's where I'm standing so I mean, it, it is not a very deep shop at all. Uh, so, yeah. I actually thought it was deeper than it is the other day. But I would like it to be about 5 or 10 more feet that way. But eventually, later on in life, hopefully, I'll get around to building one that is a nice size that I'll be able to use. So, I know. This early life thing. A lot of people say it's just a phase, but I'm working my butt off, and I think I've worked my butt off so much I'm sick of it, literally, because I'm I'm sick right now. Anyway, so yeah, that is this. That's gonna conclude this video. This is shop tour. Um. Uh. What did I? What was I just saying? Oh, toolbox tour, and shop update. I had that completely backwards. Uh. So yeah, but real quick, I don't know if I finished this segment or not. I wanted to talk about traveling to junkyards and stuff. So, whenever as I'm doing this 81 build, I'm having to buy cabs, doors, fenders, and stuff like that. And uh, stuff like that, you know, sometimes has other crap in the way. You know, solenoids, uh, whatever it may be. You know, whatever you're pulling, whatever it may be. So, whenever you're out, you know, say you're going to a junkyard that's an hour away, you want sufficient uh, items to be able to get by. So... Uh, or, let's say you're going and doing what a lot of these guys on YouTube are doing now, and you're doing an old restoration project where you're going to get it moving where it sits. A lot of people are doing that now, and that's great. So, having this toolbox completely full of wrenches and all that such eliminates me having any problem with wrenches. I also bring that with me because that's portable. Um, my socket rails, my sockets, I bring all that, put it in a bag, and then I have that. Okay, and then I bring it that adapters oh my god can I stop hiccuping hold on I also bring my M18 fuel uh, 3 inch stubby my half inch and a sawzall just in case we have any really rusty stuff uh, we also have a grinder but it's the wall and we do bring it too sometimes oh anyways 
So yeah guys, that is going to be the shop update and toolbox store. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I know that it hasn't been my typical repair video, but I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, this is going to be part of the 81 build. So the 81 build is going to be a long process, uh, a lot longer than I guess any of you really thought. Um, probably than I thought too, because I didn't really think that far ahead. Um, but yeah. So I didn't realize how much I was going to have to do here. I thought I could get it all done at my school up there, which I was able to get the motor and transmission done, which is phenomenally huge pieces of this project. Uh, if we don't have a motor, we don't have a transmission, we don't have any power plant or gears to put anything into. So, Anyways, guys, so I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.